So, welcome to Tatooine, aka Rabjurg Mille, which is a very large sand dune up on the top peninsula in Denmark. Quite a popular tourist attraction, and it is late afternoon after we've had some Danish pastries, or as in Denmark, I presume they just call them pastries. And it is mahusive. Um, I did have a look at the information board on the way in. Uh, I took a photo of it so I can remind myself later about just how much sand is here and how fast it's moving across the landscape. But um, with a lot of tourists that have been here throughout the day, it's not very windy, there are footsteps everywhere. So what I'm trying to do is just find some little areas that haven't been touched by children, humans, dogs, um, and just try and photograph some of the patterns that are in the that are in the sand as the, the air comes in from the west to the east. So I'll just show you this. Let's just set my camera up. Just these little areas here, just trying to find the nice patterns in the sand, make some leading lines. As you can see, the sky, uh, there's a lot of high cloud at the moment and it's, it's basically just a huge light box which is making everything really dull. So there will have to be a little bit of post-processing to try and get this to become a nice photo. But it's a little bit of fun just to try and find nice patterns, maybe a little bit of abstract. Just trying to come up with uh, some nice compositions there to try and train my compositional eye. But this place is just incredible. Huge, huge sand dune. So I just had an idea. I've sent Kaz off packing. And, oh, uh, yeah, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, stop. And um, <laughs> she's up there. I'm down here and I've got the camera. I uh, can you see it? And yeah, uh, there it is. So she's just up there and the, the, the sand lines are going directly up towards her. She stood at the top, looking quite small. So I've got this huge foreground of all of the, all of the sand lines going up towards Kaz at the top there. And just to give it a bit of, a bit of scale, I think. It might look quite nice. And the sun's coming. Right, I'm gonna take some photos. Bye. Okay, so I think those turned out pretty well. Um, Kaz is just on our way back down from on top of the dune. But, um, what I've done here, I've just gone into aperture priority mode. I've put a higher f-stop on so I can get a better um, depth of field or a bigger depth of field. So I'm on f11 on my 20 mil prime. And uh, I might need to focus stack it because the camera is very close to the ground, pointing towards the ground. And I think the, the closest part that's in frame is probably 30, 40 centimeters away and Kaz is, well, where were you? About 20, 30 meters away. So I've put it into live view on my camera and I can click on the screen and tell it where to focus. So I just tap at the top and then a couple of times in the middle and once at the bottom. So I take about four exposures, all with different focuses. And hopefully when I bring them all together, I'll have a full frame that's in focus. But I guess I'll find out when I take it back to Photoshop. But uh, yeah, liking the look of this one. Nice and simple. Simple lines going up, person at the top, just to show a sense of scale. And uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit of sun that's just popped out behind me that I'll have to put a lot of contrast in to try and uh, bring out some of these shapes in the, in the sand. Thankfully, I did manage to catch some of the light. And as you can see here, it accentuated those long lines in the sand with Kaz standing at the top. The composition here has lots of leading lines. It has a minimal central composition and a clear subject, a person for scale, but a bit of a boring sky. As you can see here, I used four photos to focus stack this particular shot. This second shot is slightly different, 
The lines in the sand are now acting as diagonals and there's another diagonal sort of converging at me at the top there. So I have leading lines, I have diagonals, I've got me for scale and I also managed to catch some nice light. Now this third shot is not focus stacked. It was shot at f16 to try and get as much as the frame in focus as possible. But the leading patterns aren't quite as nice as the other ones. I had to push the edit to bring out the detail because the light was flat. And it's okay. And the last shot I got from this location, I tried to do an abstract black and white. So I got this lovely curve going through the shot. The light was just creating those lovely shadows. Shot at f16, single shot again, and I'm pretty pleased with this one. So we were about to drive back to the Airbnb, thinking, ah, sun's behind the clouds, big rain cloud on the horizon, it's never gonna come back out. And then just before we got to the turning, it just started to look somewhat nice. So we thought, okay, let's carry on, go back to the lighthouse we went to on the first day before we checked in. And the sky is looking epic. The light is just nice and soft, the blues, and light yellows and um, yeah I'm just gonna shoot sorry while I get my tripod set up okay just gonna shoot this way down the road towards the um, the lighthouse itself um, f11 ISO 100 I'm gonna bracket it a bit just to uh, get some uh, nice cleaner shots of the shadows and then get a nice sort of exposure of the sky which I can blend in Photoshop later. But yeah, the composure is, the composure, the composition is just down the road, um, leading line straight up to the lighthouse with the two houses on the side. And that sky, not sure how much you can make out on this video, but it's looking amazing. The shot that I actually opted to edit was one that was taken a little bit closer and looking up at the lighthouse. What I really liked about this particular photo is the symmetry between the houses either side of the lighthouse and of course that sky. I did slightly oversaturate it a little maybe but there was just so many lovely hues of yellow to orange to blue in there that I just, I just had to edit them in but I've got a clear subject, awesome sky and light, some symmetry in there as well, but perhaps the perspective of the lighthouse would have been better a bit further back up the road. Today is not only my birthday, I've just turned 36. Still mid thirties, um, but we have come out to T National Park on the western coastline of Denmark, and uh, yeah, it's a lovely woodland area. It's, it's it's a miserable day. Hopefully, get some mood. Maybe the mist could come down a little bit further, but again, uh, seeing as it was my birthday, we went out for a huge brunch, and now I feel fat instead of coming to take photos in the morning. But uh, like I said in a, in a previous video, I'm crap at woodland photography. I've never really done it. So it's just a chance to come out and practice and maybe see if you can find any compositions within the woodland areas. And, and this is, place is beautiful. I mean, you've got all the, uh, the fir trees, this lush green carpet across the, uh, the woodland floor. So yeah, just going to try and take a few photos and see what they look like um, and just practice my uh, woodland composition. I probably need to do a bit more research on it and, and try and find uh, some people like uh, Nigel Danson and Mads who are, you know, really good at um, taking woodland photographs. Whereas mine just look like you've rocked up with an iPhone and gone, oh, look, there's a few trees. Um, nothing really comes together. I think a lot of it is about the the conditions that you take the photo. Um, 
a lot of mist usually does help because if you're in a thick woodland, a lot of trees in the distance, the whole picture can get a lot cluttered. But if you stick a load of fog in between each layer of trees and they slowly get more and more distant, you bring a bit of depth into the composition. Whereas today, I don't think I'm gonna get that, but at least I can try some other compositional tools like leading lines, maybe just going down low, creating a big foreground and some trees towards the background and just try and bring groups of things together into the frame. So I'm just gonna give it a try while we have a little wander around and try and burn off my birthday brunch. So looking at some of the photos that I took from that woodland, I was right. I am not very good at this. On this particular photo, I do have that symmetry there, but I think it's a little bit too busy on either side with the trees. The conditions aren't great, and like I said, a bit of mist could have given some separation between the trees, but I haven't got it quite right, and, and the light was flat as well. And the second photo, there was some light just coming down through a little gap in the canopy into that middle area there, but I haven't quite got that in the middle. It's not symmetrical and I've overproduced this photo and I don't quite like it. We've left the woods, the place where the uh, bears poo, apparently. And uh, driven a bit further down through the national park, down to the coast. And um, finally, the, the clouds have come down to sea level. We've got this great mist. So I've just stuck an ND filter on uh, and I've just got my feet soaking wet down by those waves. And there's people walking down the beach into like this infinity sort of mist. So I'm just trying to get a bit of motion in the waves, shortish, such as cut the speed about, I don't know, anywhere between a second and two seconds, maybe below, just trying to get that right, get that right spot where the waves look nice and maybe the, the back drawer has got some lines going through it. The composition where the waves go in at the beach because I'm on, I don't know if you can see, I'm on these rocks at the moment. I've come a little bit higher since I've got one soggy foot and one foot from the sand as I very badly ran away from a large wave. But uh, yeah, it's a nice little spot, moody atmosphere. And, um, yeah, take some photos to see what they look like. I'm really happy with how this particular shot turned out. Even when the conditions look like they are pretty miserable, you can go out and get some moody weather shots. This is actually a blend of three different photos, two for the waves and one for the people in the distance. Obviously, the ones for the waves are a little bit longer, 0.3 to 0.5 seconds, and I took the ND filter off for the photo of the people in the distance put them all together and I've got this amazing composition where I have the leading line of the shoreline going up towards the amber hunters in the background and there's also that little couple just going off into the distance into the mist. You really get a sense of depth here and I, and I really like it. The only negative maybe is some of that negative space in the sky. I could maybe cut that down a bit but it does give you a sense of the scale of the mist that's descending on this coastline. I'm afraid that's it for today's video. However, I did visit a lot more places in Denmark. So if you liked what you saw today, please give it a like, give it a subscribe so you get notifications when my next Photographing Denmark videos are available. As always, thanks for watching and happy snapping.